10-year-old Emily Jimenez Ayon wants to be a doctor. To do that, she knows she'll need to go to college. And to get there, she's willing to make some sacrifices. For the moment, that includes giving up her quinceanera, the equivalent of a coming out party that many Mexican-American families throw for their daughter's 15th birthdays. I don't want to have like a 15-year-old because I want to save money and for I can go to the university. That's right. She wants to save the money to go toward college. Her mother, Gladys Ayon, says this is a new outlook for her daughter and her family. Before we didn't talk a lot about it, but the people from Promise came with the mentality of helping the mothers from the time they're pregnant and helping them so that their children do well and little by little and get to college. Castle Park's Promise Neighborhood Program is one of about a dozen Promise neighborhoods across the country. The federal government has set aside about $100 million for programs programs like these over the last three years. Last year, a partnership of almost 30 organizations in Castle Park got a $28 million five-year grant to provide what's being called cradle-to-career support for the neighborhood's children and families. We saw a little, lot of gaps in services, and we saw a lot of what was keeping kids from being successful in school or keeping kids from going to college. That's Catherine Lambeau. She's CEO of South Bay Community Services, the group leading the Promise neighborhood. She says getting more children to go to college is the goal of the whole effort. You had parents, 96 percent of the parents saying they wanted their children to go to college, but then, and they talked to their kids about it, but then when you asked them what they were talking to them about is that we can't afford it, you can't go to college. But changing that mentality is a tall order in a neighborhood like Castle Park, where English proficiency is low, two-thirds of adults don't have high school diplomas, and more than half of households don't have a full-time breadwinner. Lembo says that's why they have to start early. There's an early learning network, and, and that has to do with preventing any gaps or, or getting rid of the gaps that kids have even before they enter school. That network includes a new preschool Lembo is visiting today on the Castle Park Elementary campus where students are learning in English and Spanish. Cuatro. Cuatro. But it also includes newborn home visits by family clinic doctors that are part of the Promise neighborhood and parenting classes called Universidad de Padres or Parent University. Gladys Ayon says those classes have given her the tools to get involved with her daughter's education. This helped me a lot because in my daughter's classroom, everything is in English, and the teacher gives me all the work in Spanish so I can explain it to her. This helped me a lot because now I communicate a lot with the teacher. It helps me a lot with my daughter because I struggled a lot with English. Ayon is also spending more time on the school's campus, not just in classes, but planting and tending this parent-run garden that was paid for with Promise Neighborhood dollars. Evidence of those dollars is everywhere on campus, from in-class and after-school tutors to an after-school computer lab where students can catch up on reading skills. The school's resource teacher, Kim Cayado, says the school is also connected with services now that help keep kids in school and learning. We had a family that needed uh, immediate help with shelter and so we went through the Promise neighborhood. We asked them if they could do a referral, then they helped them through the whole process. Those connections have only been in place since school started at the end of July, but Callado says they're starting to pay off. We're still working on it. We just started, but yes, we already see, we're already we already seeing a difference because we're getting so much support on calling parents, asking them why they're absent. So last, last week we were celebrating that we did really well with our attendance. But being on campus isn't enough. On a recent afternoon, the Promise Neighborhood's promotoras were getting ready to go knocking on doors to recruit for one of their programs. We can actually invite not just the 55 and older to this one, this workshop, everyone's invited. Cindy Gonzalez became a promotora after years of volunteering at her son's school, Castle Park Middle, which is also part of the Promise neighborhood. We are the eyes, the ears, and especially the voice of the community. Um, we're there to uh, inform the community of everything that we're learning, and we're also there to navigate them through all, all the programs. The promotoras are neighborhood residents, so Gonzalez says parents trust them in a way they may not trust school administrators. If parents are more comfortable, they'll open up and let promotoras know what services they may really need. Gonzalez says she's seen firsthand what the influx of support and extended school day programs from the Promise neighborhood can mean for students. I would hear every morning, hey, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go to school, and it was a struggle. But along with Promise Neighborhood, 
neighborhoods came a new philosophy at her son's middle school. It holds them accountable for not going to school, for not doing their homework, um, and he would have to, to make up his days on Saturdays. I, didn't, I stopped hearing that every morning, I don't want to go to school, because he knew there's consequences. Now, she says, her son's in high school outside the neighborhood, but he knows college is in his future. Gonzalez says they're planning for him in ways they didn't for his older sister. We didn't have all the information. I'm sure the school had it, but it wasn't accessible, readily accessible to us uh, at the time. And I think that's one of the reasons why I got involved also was because I wanted to share that information with the community also. When the five-year grant ends, the schools and organizations will have to find other ways to keep successful programs running. Lembo says they'll be gauging success in a lot of different ways. They'll be looking at how many infants and toddlers have access to medical care somewhere other than an emergency room. They're asking parents how much they read to young children. They're also tracking things like high school graduation rates, college enrollment, and test scores. But Gonzalez is looking for something else. I'm hoping that the community uh, wakes up and realizes that they have a voice and that they can make a difference in their communities and their schools for their children. That kind of change, she thinks, might outlast any program. Kyla Calvert, KPBS News. Okay. So